Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. In today's podcast, we're going to be discussing what is Auto Hockey's USP. Hey everyone, it's Joe here in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. Today, we're going to be discussing auto hockey's USP. What is it? And so to start off, you know, I purposely kind of veiled the USP. It's a, it's a term used. It was, it was coined by Ross Reeves in 1961, who was this uh, universe. He was a television advertising planner, but he was this really great pioneer. And I actually have his original book that this was published in. Um, and it talks about, like, why, you know, your advertising needs to differentiate your products. And you need to really make sure you mention your USP, your unique selling proposition. Right. And you can use this in advertising. You can use it for you when you go to get a job or whatever, right? In your bio, everything, right? When you have a product, you should have a unique selling proposition. So I thought it'd be fun to discuss what is it about auto hotkey? And, and Dan Kennedy, who I'm a big fan of, he talks a lot about it and he sums it up, basically says, why should someone buy from you? You know, buy your product, whatever, instead of from your competitors or instead of doing nothing at all. Right. That's how he kind of says, think about that. Uh, for that, let's start, let's shift it over now to auto hotkey. Why should someone use auto hotkey over some other competitive language like Python, JavaScript, you know, C sharp, whatever, Ruby, or do nothing at all? So what's our first one, Jackie? What do you think? To me, one of the biggest ones with auto hotkey has always uh, been how easy to learn it is, right? It, I felt it was very intuitive when I started using it. Now it's many years ago, but um, coming from maybe having a good insight into the workings of computers, starting back in MS-DOS and stuff like that, there was no inclination and, and fear of syntax. It was not like, I don't understand why the comma needs to be in a specific place. I had a full understanding of why you typed out things in a specific way. But our hotkeys commands might be a way of putting it, made it so intuitive that if you looked into documentation, you had the parameters well uh, explained, and it was pretty easy to just copy that in, put it there, and have something. Yeah, it's spot on. I think it's what it's one of the things that drew me to it was I didn't have to learn how to make sure all my variables are defined or set the definitions to say this one's an integer and this one's a string and all this other junk. But I wanted to just get my work done. And it's so easy to learn and it's flexible. One of the things I absolutely love about it. It is my number one thing. I think this brings people to AutoHotKey. It's why you should use AutoHotKey over other languages, especially you know, again, if you're not a programmer, right? This is, I think, the language you should be using. Uh, the very next one I'd say is there are so many things you can do with it when you're working on a Windows computer, right? Like I have one video where I talk to 17 different ways that you can automate programs with AutoHotKey. It connects to, I call it the Swiss Army knife for Windows, right? Because it, it can do so many things with Windows. It's it's just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. Did, of course, our hotkey being bound to Windows, of course, also means that it, it knows what it's connecting to and it doesn't need to go that widespread with, with how it works. Uh, but other languages that we normally compare our hotkey to is They've tried to be more than was probably needed from them because our hotkey isn't a programming language like every other programming language. It has specific uses and it has lots of power and you can do almost anything, not because you can build a new Windows per se, but you could absolutely build uh, games. We've seen small games. We've seen all kinds of automation. You can build all kinds of different things because it's so well connected into the Windows API. Uh, and I'd say, to me, one of the things that I've loved about it as well is that our hotkey was just text in a text file. When I first started, I used Notepad, as many do, because I didn't need to go and find an IDE. I didn't need to do all kinds of setup. I, I, I got a hotkey, it had an installer, it was installed, and now I had an extension, AHK. 
it was put in the right click menu create new hk file and it opened up in notepad because it never found any ide to use and it it was so low bar to entry that it, it just felt nice for it to not try and be more yeah and, and which i'm sure you're going to agree with we're not saying you shouldn't use uh, a, an ide right it, it's just that you don't have to right you can have anyone can look at it they can pop open the file in, in notepad or some text editor and look at what's there and back to our one of our earlier points the text is very readable. It makes sense. You can read it and go, oh, this is what it's doing, right? It's not convoluted and hard to follow. So yeah, it's, it's amazing that's there, uh, which also, which ties into the next one, you can easily um, you know, right click, compile it, but in distribute that code, you can give it to other people that don't have auto hotkey installed. And it's a you know small file, you give it to them, they can run it often on almost any version of Windows, right? There are you know, certain things that are tied to newer version to Windows and some that don't have it in the older version, but for the most part, very stable across different versions of Windows. And that's just an amazing feat. Yeah, I'd say the distributing part, the, this the thing, it was something that had limited me in other languages. Uh, when I was new, maybe I had been using our hotkey for some time. I, of course, looked into other languages. And some of the things that stopped me dead in right tracks was how hard it actually was to get them to do a very simple thing on Windows. I was still limited to Windows. I was working in a Windows environment at work. I had Windows installed at home. I didn't need something that worked uh, generally on uh, Macs or to all the general public or on iPhones or whatever. Just the idea of something that ran locally on this computer and it wasn't in any way as simple in the other few languages that I dabbled in. It was just in auto hotkey, install, run the HK file, it happened directly on Windows, or um, compile it into an exit file and give it to my friend and it ran. I got everything in the installer Everything was right there in the right-click menu. I'm not saying that our languages can't do the same, but for me to set it up and become a developer without a hotkey was just so simple. I'd say the, the next one here as well, very lightweight, right? Small files, even the executable, as when everything is packaged in there, um, the size of that is, and it's I know it's something that Lecticos and other developers have, have always kept an eye on, making sure that it's pretty small. I know we have lots of room on Windows now, but the idea of it not being bloated, it's not filled with all kinds of weird ideas that people got at some point. It's always been tried to keep it um, simple and to the point. Um, if you need specific functionality or oh that's really really nice i love making graphical user interfaces that don't look like the ones that are built in oh oh we can build that in no no we'll not do that if you need that go and grab the library and it's not <laughs> to me i remember python where i had to load in modules and i didn't understand it back then and stuff like that um but here you go and grab the file place it next to yours and type include and that was it it was as simple as storing every other file on my computer it it was very very straightforward yeah and actually since you brought it up jackie i was going to say we didn't write this as a bullet of like the the main usp but it ties into what you just said with python it almost comes with like no functionality that you get. You have to go find different modules and then sometimes even find particular versions of that module. And, and, and then often they'll say like, we'll just install another version of Python, which is like 30 megs, if I remember right, and those libraries and keep that over there and then have this one over here. And it, it just became so confusing and just really complex. Um, the really, really cool thing about AutoHotKey, which we mentioned earlier, is because you're connecting to the Windows API, it's, I don't know how to say this properly. It comes with so much functionality built in, and I don't mean to 
contradict what you said earlier because they didn't add new stuff, but the fact that you can leverage the stuff already in Windows because you're using its technology instead of packing stuff with it, that that's why it's so small and yet so versatile out of the box. You don't have to go get all these crazy libraries, you know, for doing a lot of stuff. Now, some things, if you want specific stuff, you do. But yeah, it's it's amazingly functional with such a small file size. It's crazy. Uh, and one of the other ones, which is just such a gem, is their documentation is just, it's top notch. There's no way around it, right? It's, whoever, you know, has written all this stuff over the years, it's so crystal clear on almost everything. It's rare you can't read something and go, oh, yeah, okay. And often people will say, how do I do this? And you're like, did you did you read the documentation? Because like, it's there, right? It's so clear. <laughs> I, I, as, as you just said, did you read the documentation? It's there. So many times people have asked for help and the only real thing I needed to do to help them was go to the documentation, the page of whatever they were trying to do, and read it, truly read it, not yeah. skim it, just read it. And actually, it was there. It, it's been something that has happened time and time again. I'm not saying it's uh, flawless per se, but it's really top notch. I'd, I'd say that because they've really explained into all the minute details of amazing things there. So yeah, yeah, I'd say top notch documentation, 100%. And um, the next one is, as I alluded to here, the amazingly helpful community. I, I, I know that uh, all languages have communities and larger languages have entities that take care of the actual uh, development of the language and there, it's used in all different kinds of settings and there will be different types of places where there are communities around it uh, and with Arhatki's uh, relatively smaller size that has been transcuned into a single um, domain online mostly it's not because you can't find the information in other places but within reason it's still kept within uh, a fairly small uh, circle and therefore the community in there is just very accessible yeah and actually to that point jackie i was gonna say some people might say it's a weakness that there's not all these different places to go for help and for where you can find files. But it's really a strength because it narrows down your search where you're looking for. And we didn't also, this is one of the things we didn't mention, but it, it has to do with all the stuff we talked about. There's a ton of historical stuff on solving problems that you've probably trying to do. So there's example after example after example on doing a lot of the stuff, right? So it's, it's very cool that there's this historical thing there that you can go search. And again, to your point, you don't have to go to 80 different communities to try to search and look to see if there's a solution, right? It's, it keeps it very narrow. Um, one of the really other big things, depending if you're in like corporate America or, or whatnot, you may not be an admin on your computer. The fact that you can just put auto hockey on a thumb drive and you don't have to install it, as long as you can, you know, put that thumb drive in and see those files, you can usually run what you're doing without much of a problem. Sometimes you have to level, you know, somehow find a way to uh, run it at an admin level kind of thing, but it's still, it's not many programs you can just put on a thumb drive and, and run, you know, without having any issues. No, it's not because it's, it, it, some might see it as a security liability, but that's not the general idea of it. The, the thing with our hotkey is just that the way it was originally built means that it just comes off the bat portable, right? It It's... Uh, it's lightweight, as has been said, and it has existed for Windows for so long where um, the amount of space it took up, the amount of processing power it used, stuff like that was very important at the time. And people had a great use for an open source language that was also portable because you can put it on a thumb drive. You can store all of your scripts on the same thumb drive and you can run it if you put it into a computer. So you don't need to have that issue of it being stored in different locations. You can just take it with you. Now people might store it in the cloud instead. 
Mm-hmm. That wasn't a thing back then. So back then it was uh, more useful right. than it might be now, but it's still possible. I'd say the last one is, as I just said, it's open source and it's free. I know that most languages are probably free in some way and many languages have in some way become more open in their source, but Arahatki has always been this way. It was one of the big things that made it uh, move away from its original uh, code was to make it open source um, because that's just better. <laughs> it's it's a good way of saying we don't have anything to hide. We're free. We don't have any plans of making uh, something non-free. We don't have any kind of um, second agenda or anything like that. Uh, and the community has been able to thrive for, I don't even know, 10, 15 years, whatever more, maybe. Uh, maybe it's back 2004, Chris made it. I don't remember the exact date, no. but uh, being able to exist for that long, keeping a community thriving, still being open source, nobody has taken the code and ran with it and pushed off, off the market or something. I'm not sure exactly why companies back in the day was so afraid of open source. It's it's maybe well, the general idea today that it's more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's, you know, I know at TI when I worked there, there was concern about getting too vested in a tool that, hey, you identify a problem and there's no paid support to go and fix it. You know, you're you're hoping someone will, but th- that was a big thing. But yeah, I, the, the thing I'd like to take a step back and go to, like, let's compare it to AutoIt. First, let's go back and compare it on the community-wise. There's no no comparison as far as I'm concerned. The people at AutoEd compared to AutoHotKey, wow. You know, AutoHotKey people are so nice and helpful. And I'm gonna I'm not gonna say the stuff about the AutoEd community that I'd like to say because um, I'm gonna keep this positive. But there's a big difference. Um, but the uh, and back to the open source thing, and that's the thing, right? Is AutoEd's not open source anymore? Well, there was a, it was for a time, correct? I'm not. I'm, I don't remember if it actually was, but I do believe that the split came with what they wanted. The language. Uh, Chris was one of the the yeah. people behind the audit uh, thing back then, and when the other developers wanted to move in a specific uh, uh, direction, yeah. direction exactly, um, they weren't in agreement. And I'm not sure if it was the closed source part or whatever it was, or if the open source was something that Chris needed to do to to be allowed to move outside or whatever it was. I don't know, but um, to me, it has meant that we've gotten uh, our hotkey and version um, uh, L and H and iron and different other uh, things over the years um, and now version 2 and everything still open source probably because the license says that it needs to be so but still it's meant that the community has been able to move along i know we have few big language developers but we still have enough for the language to be more than just a single thing. Whereas with the ORIT one, you need to have someone on the back end knowing that. And if they stop developing it, nobody would be able to pick it up because they wouldn't have access to the source. So even tomorrow, if Lexicos he point. dropped off the face of the earth, right. which would be very sad, someone else might pick up the baton and continue his work. Sure. Someone yeah. might not, but the possibility is there because the access to the source is not limited. Right. Now, the, the last one, which 
it's not in our bullets, but I was thinking about it, and we, we probably should have mentioned it. And just to clarify also, even though AutoHockey itself is open source and AutoHockey, the, the domain itself, the company, they can't make money. We can make money off of AutoHockey. So it's a great tool that we can go in, create a program, sell it if we want to, make money off AutoHockey. That's perfectly okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Even if you read in the forum that that's not, it, they're incorrect in the understanding of it. You you can, and you know, Jackie and I both have made some decent money off of it, and it's it's amazing because you don't have to be a programmer, right? Like I made money years ago before I really knew what I was doing. I was making some decent money. It, it's really cool. Yeah, and you don't need to make the money developing in Outer Hotkey. You can develop something with Outer Hotkey and sell that prop uh, that that piece of software mm -hmm. you're fully allowed to do that that's not what uh, the issue yeah. is or there is actually no issue it's just the other hotkey domain as you said right. Joe, can yeah, run domain. ads or something on the other hotkey.com domain and the source itself can't be sold as something that's right. not allowed but you can create something that runs off the, the our hotkey source so your code can be sold so your software can be sold as long as you're not selling it as our hotkey oh i've made our hotkey go here buy it hundred dollars yeah. no, that's not allowed but you're it's allowed to sell i don't know soccer helper five and uh, that's right. fine it's funny how just because I've made so many videos around it, people will write me. They're like, "Hey, you know, can you make this change in Auto Hotkey?" And just it's funny is like I'm, I, yeah, I'm one. I'm not in nowhere anywhere close to being at the level I would need to be. But that you know, it just I'm like, no, I, I don't actually develop Auto Hotkey. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's like you said, that's Lexicos and some select people, which we really are really really appreciative for their work. Absolutely. Awesome. So, hey, if there's any that we missed here, feel free to chime in, right? I think these are the biggest ones that, you know, come to mind of why should someone compared to other languages, you know, beside or, or not learning at all? Because, hey, I guess the, the, the final one is it saves you a crap load of time, right? Like time is money and learning auto hotkey saves you a ton of time. That's why you should start learning how to code, because if you don't, you're just you're not scaling, right? Like you can you can end up scaling things and saving time and being able to give it to other people and then everyone can actually use your code and save time not just you yeah it, it should be something that more people who use computers every day had in the back of their minds can the th task that i'm doing be automated uh, right. not to automate themselves out of a job but to give themselves a leeway to do even more awesome all right well thanks everyone Bye. absolutely Bye.